Hi, this is Lynn Hansen with Lynn Hansen Gallery, and I'm here to show you the new works that are up in my gallery by Eric Day Chamberlain, and the name of the show is Still Lives. I'll introduce you to him in a moment. I just want to also say that the Icon Show, 8th Annual Icon Show, is coming up, and the deadline for applications is August 8th. So please send in your applications. Also, um, the Jesse Reno workshop is at the end of this month if you want to get on the wait list. And Donna Watson is having a workshop in October. Both are on the website. So Eric, hello and welcome to my gallery. And I'm so happy to have your work here. So can you tell me a little bit about what still lifes mean to you and how you got started doing still lifes? Yeah, and first just thank you, Lynn, for letting me show my work here at your gallery. Um, the still lifes I've been doing for probably a little over 10 years, and they started with a random thank you note that I sent to the woman that hosted my parents' 50th wedding anniversary, and we had that in her cafe, that, which was called the White House Cafe, mm -hmm. and so I did a little watercolor of three white pictures. Oh, nice. But it was just, I just painted all the negative space. And so that was kind of my idea when I started doing this still life. I would leave the white of the canvas or the paper as the object and just paint around it and form the object. So, um, and eventually, as you'll see, they develop from tabletop settings to more settings in the studio jars and bottles, etc. So, How many years have you been an artist? I went to school at the University of Washington. I went back to school and got my BFA there. So I graduated there in 1997. And then I went down to Dallas at SMU, um, school, Meadows School of the Art, and got my MFA nice. in 2001. I moved back to Seattle here in, uh, about a year later, the end of 2002. So I've been practicing art uh, since then and teaching on and off at Pratt um, and other area, other places around the area. Do you teach painting at Pratt? I teach monotype. Oh, nice. Okay. And that's what I got my degree in at University of Washington, was printmaking. Okay. And in your master's program, did you do still lifes or were you... I did not do still lifes. I, I started out doing some abstract work and then I did some figurative work. Okay. Mostly. Well, let's start walking around and um, saying what all the titles are, like I usually do, and then you can comment as we go. So this piece is called Green Cake Plate. And I like to just show the whole piece and then show some close-ups. And, and on, on some of the re recent still lives on the tabletop, I've tried just to introduce some pattern whether it's on the table or in the background. So here, thinking of like a checkered tablecloth. Yeah, I like that piece a lot. This piece I've had in the gallery a, lot, a while, I really love this piece, it's called Three Objects. And it's got a lot of texture to it. Some of your paintings are smoother. Yeah. This one has a lot of texture. Yeah, I think that's one of the more built up or looks a little different than some of them, but uh, I think I was starting to use more of a palette knife to apply the paint on Looks those. like it, yeah. And this is called Blue Stripe Bowl. And again, some of the, if I was, I worked in a houseware store for about 14 years, and I would see the dinnerware displays, and that's kind of what inspired me I as well. Really, did you, did you work on the, the displays at the store? I, I did it at some time, but mostly I was in, in sales. Okay. And this is a piece from Eric's studio, and it's called Studio Still Life. Eric has a beautiful, big, gigantic studio that looks like a real artist studio would have in New York or something, and it overlooks the stadium. Well, yeah, so th this, this was in my older studio, which was still a very nice space. Um, but I, I recently moved into a bigger space at Inkscape, and it has allowed me to 
have a nice setup for both painting and printmaking. And that's Inkscape is only what half a mile yeah, away. Yeah, just most. a short distance away. In fact, I walked over here today. So. And there's two smaller studio pieces. And these I don't have the name up yet. Eric, can you uh, tell us? Three jars on a yellow table and gray still white. Nice. And then this one is called Oranges. Yeah. And, and again, that one is a little different because I generally do more of the palette knife on the studio still lives with the jars and that, but this has the tabletop setting, but still I build that up with some texture. And it's a it's a little bit of an earlier piece. I love the colors in that one. And this is called Red Still Life. And that's more of a studio one. Yes. Yeah. It's very vibrant. And this is called Green Still Life. And I will, I will say on what I term the studio still lives is that I do have jars around that I can reference and look at. Mm -hmm. um, the other ones of the tabletop settings and that, those are all pretty much from memory and just imagine. Nice. And there's a really big one. And this is called Studio Still Life with Painting some nice abstract paintings in the background. Yes, and, th and so this actually I started I mean, quite a while ago. Um, I did a lithography workshop down in Oaxaca mm. uh, with uh, Pratt uh, Fine Art Center here in Seattle. It was a week long uh, workshop, but I really just liked the, the studio we were in I don't remember that yellow was on the walls, but I, I got some new uh, shapes for some of the objects. And originally this this had a litho stone on the table. Um, I think that blue was kind of a prominent background and I went back in to rework it. And so I painted out a lot that was there, but still kept some of the some of the, the past painting and then added the, the abstract paintings. So yeah, it's really fun. That one on the left it almost reads like a window too with that yeah. green kind of blue. It breaks the space up there. So I'm going to go out in the hallway. We have a new wall that we get to use. We trade off with shift. And this is a beautiful piece that's sitting by itself out in the hallway. It looks really cool next to the window. And this is called, what that, is that's, this? That's, uh, I believe it's cake plate with yes. lemons. Yes, cake plate with lemons. That cake plate is also a reoccurring and familiar uh, object, uh, as well as I would say the pitcher um, and the cake plate. To go into the other rooms now. Oh, we didn't do this ball yet. Okay, this is called Blue Box, and that's a studio piece. And this is studio. And just a little background on, I started uh, doing those boxes. Uh, I took a workshop, collage workshop with Nancy Gruskin uh, in 2020, I believe it was. And so we were, I was working at home and doing collages, and I had these green boxes that were my dad's, mm -hmm. holding, uh, one has wood carving tools, and the other was a paint box. But so there was, and I never really thought about it, but I mean, I've had those boxes now for over, they've been kicking around for over 50 years. Wow. And uh, they're green, but I have, so around the corner there'll, there'll be some, ones with green boxes, but I've changed the color on some, but, but it also, while the shape, the box shape is new, but it's still, in some of my earlier tabletop uh, paintings, 
I would include a baker that has very yeah. much the similar mm -hmm. shape, but just with handles on it. So yeah, that vibrant yellow window is really yes. nice. And those two plant pieces that he did. This is called house plant, and this is with acrylic. So it's different than all the rest of oils so far. And this one, I'm sorry, That's I'm getting glare. Potted plant. Potted plant. I'm getting glare on this one, but you'll have to come see it. And I just like working uh, with acrylic on paper uh, to be able to make it a little more expressive than. Very expressive. And I'll talk a little bit more about the plants when we hit the other okay. pieces. So now I'll do the blue next. This is the your baker. He was talking yes. about the boxes, so this has the same shape. It's red baker, green baker. Yeah, that green is a that it's a covered baking dish. Mm -hmm. another. I also mm -hmm. just just to, I introduce a little color on I have a red picture on that as well. And generally, most of the pictures are usually just white. Right. That's true. So these are some mono prints, and this is green box, and this one is blue box. And this one is red platter. And yellow bowl. It's been nice to, with my new studio, to have my press readily available to work uh -huh. back and forth. Uh, you know, with the two previous ones you showed, the green box and blue box, I have paintings similar to those mm -hmm. as well. And I don't usually go back and forth so much with the still lifes. More, I do with the abstract work. I will work from a painting to do a print and then a drawing back and forth that way. But on the still lifes, I don't usually do that too often. But it was nice to have the paintings up or, or vice versa to work back right. and forth. Nice to have a printing press in your studio. And this is a big one, red pitcher. This is oil paint again. And it, it, this one was worked for a little while as well. I kept going back and forth on that background. I really like the, the table and the expressiveness of the table and the yeah. marks in there. So I didn't want to take away from that. And ended up just having more of that white background. Very expressive. This piece, I don't know if I can fit it all in the picture, but it's big. Again, it's oranges and lemons. And here, you know, again, I'm just trying to introduce some background or pattern in the background, as well as striped rug on the, on the bottom, um, just to introduce a little pattern. And we also have a base of flowers yeah. on there. Is that a little Matisse influence? Uh, that, that's, you know, that's one, one of the artists that I, I look at. Um, and who else do you admire? Well, on the abstract realm, I really like uh, Willem de Kooning, mm -hmm. uh, Richard Diebenkorn. Oh. And even corn, you know, went back and forth from figurative to um, more maybe I don't know uh, landscape, and then ending up with his. I see Deben corn in the big studio piece back there. The paintings on the, the wall, paint, yes. a little bit of yeah. Deben corn back there. And then I also just really appreciate some of the English artists. There's William Scott and Ben Nicholson. Mm -hmm as well as others, and uh, people often think of Morandi, and I don't yes. 
I look at Mirandi, but I, I'm not trying to right. paint any in right. that sense, but I do. So now we're seeing some plants, more plants or vases with flowers, and this one pronounce it for me. Well, uh, well I'm not sure. My Spanish is is not. I, I don't know Spanish, but I think it's Ramelet de Fleurose. Two. Uh, two. Those. And I, I apologize for any mispronunciation there. So this piece and the other piece that's just to the right here. So this is, these two paintings are a little uh, different in the fact that they are based on a photograph that I purchased when I was in Oaxaca that, I, that workshop I mentioned. And oh yeah. I found just a little photograph uh, of a bouquet of flowers. And so that's why uh, I titled them in Spanish. And I was actually looking, you know, referencing the photographs when I was painting them. And then, um, and again, that was 2015 at some, oh, but the, oh, that's when I did the, the photo. I don't think I paint these later, but then I started to add more bouquets and flowers and that in my, in my still paintings, lives. in my still lives, yeah. yes. I love those two. The Oaxacan ones are really nice. And this is called Black and White Still Life, and it's a monotype. And this one is is referencing a painting I did as well. Mm -hmm. And well, on, on that painting, I was trying to, I mentioned the, well, the acrylic on paper, I also like to just do ink and gesso on paper. And so I was trying to capture that essence in the painting with oil. And I'll very quickly go yeah. over to that. And then from that, I was referencing uh, for the monotype. And I did several of those, uh, but that was one of the other. Let me get to it. And then the bottom one over here is red platter green vase. That's another monotype. Mm -hmm. And then this is one of the postcard pieces. It is called Bouquet, and it's oil paint. And lots of flowers and oranges. Yeah, and the flowers kind of changed the painting because again, I had started this with a, a red checker tablecloth. And it looked a little- Oh, really? It looked a little Christmassy. Yeah. And then with the flowers, it just did not work and so you can still see some under yeah, I see some there. so it gives a hint of that um, but it looks nicely and there's one back here called still life with plant and back into the plants again this is also oil and this one again I don't usually work from sketches or that, but this one I did do a small little wash and it's referencing, referencing that. Okay. Over here, this one is called Seaside and it's oil again and there's a little bit of a little bit more realism in the background this here. yeah and this is an earlier painting um just as i and so the table is probably a little a few more objects on the table but i do include that window in the background mm -hmm. um, give it just kind of a placement of where it is and then this one is red bases, yellow bowl, blue baker. So we've got the box shape again, and I love blue and white plates, so I'm always a sucker for any painting with blue and white plates. Well, that, that any, some, oftentimes be, my bowls would be blue and white stripe or a blue stripe plaid. And this is acrylic on canvas, so I think it's, might be the only acrylic on canvas that I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks very oil-like. 
Yes. We did, we did it well to make it look like that. And this is called Ed's Cloud Jar. And, and this one's kind of a bridge between the tabletop uh, still lives and the studio still lives. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ed Nelson has a studio at Inkscape, and I was up visiting him one day and I was looking down at his few of his pottery. He, he doesn't do the pottery now, but he had some of his pottery pieces mm -hmm. there. And I just kept looking at that, that jar, that jar. Yeah. and I asked him if I could borrow it to uh, do some paintings and then he, he offered a few other pieces there. And I had them to reference and it started out, it wasn't working and I kind of set it aside and later I was thinking, well, the tabletop still has to, I guess I wasn't flattening them out as I usually do, like the pictures and that. Right. So I went back into it, changed it a bit. And um, so it, it has kind of a bridge between a studio still life, mm -hmm. which I could reference the items, but still in some of the areas. And uh, I do have windows in my studio. They're not that, and so I spaced that way. Nice windows. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one we talked about already, and it's gorgeous. Then this one, Eric, what is this that, one that, That's a still, still life with lemon. Still yeah. life with lemon. Um, again, this is one that I was uh, working with more, I think, the palette knife. Mm -hmm. So it's an earlier piece. You've had this in the gallery for a little while. Yeah. Um, so. It's a lot, a lot of texture. Yeah. And this is monoprint. It's white still life. And this this one, I, I the nice thing with having a little bit more room is I could go through some of my uh, prints. And so this is one that I had in my drawer for a while. I didn't do too much to it, but I did print over some. And I like the. And I also just, on these monotypes, I, I decided to frame them up closer to the image. I didn't mat them. Um, they're, they're floating, mm -hmm. but the frame, you don't see the edge of the paper. The, the paper goes to the edge of the backboard. But right. I, so I, I like the way that. There, they turned out as far as the presentation. I do too. And this is yellow bowl, green bowl, and it's a mono print as well. Yes, and, it, and that's actually uh, kind of, you know, the nice thing with monotech, you have that ghost when you print, yeah. and yeah. you can keep printing or building up, and so that's a variation of the black and white monotype. Oh, really? And just I, I did several of those. I think there's a couple in the show, but um, just again working on that, that background, kind of that lattice or cross shape on the background, mm -hmm. to, just to break up the space. And it has a little bit on that one. I think has a little bit of a collage element. There, it's not collage, but the way that green bowl and even the platter mm -hmm. on there it looks like the piece that been collaged. I like the way the flowers break up. And then this is another oil painting, and it is called Green Tuba Paint. And so the, there's three here that are done on panel, and I hadn't really worked on panel before. Um, or what I had, it was, it was a while ago. Um, so I was a little bit new and trying to get the feel of that again. Do you like it now? I Yes, yeah, but I, I mean, the, the other option I might try is, is stretching a, a canvas over some panel because right. if I was, it would allow me to work more with that palette knife and build up even more right. texture. This, the, it was just that smoothness um, Almost similar to when you're doing a monotype and printing on or painting on the plexiglass. So it had, mm -hmm. and I didn't. The a gentleman uh, sold me these panels that he had. He had already prepared them, so they were all dressed so in sand. Oh, that's nice. So, <laughs> that's um, but good. he had a very, you know, very smooth finish on them. So 
And this beautiful piece is yellow checkered tablecloth. And and this one actually, I mean, I one of the reasons I kind of tend to, to go to this one maybe is that I did this in one setting. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of my paintings I will start and maybe work on three or four at a time, look at them, uh, go back in, rework them, and I think I just did this all in one, one setting. Back to studio, this is red tuber paint, and that's oil. Oil on panel again. I see some scratching and the scratching yeah. back to make the shapes. And then this is green box orange painting. The, the orange painting exists in imagination right now, but <laughs> it is a kind of a direction I've been working on in some of the, the abstract work. This is red box, blue box. There's some studio things and another studio green box. So this is a great show. I'm going to walk, I'm going to do a quick walk through one more time. And so you will all be tempted to come and see it. We're open for art walk on first Thursday from 5 to 8 and Seattle is offering again free parking and three parking garages if you go on my website you can find out which one which garages you can park for free from 5 until 10 so you actually can have time to go out to dinner or something as well I'm very thankful they have that for first Thursday and my gallery is open always Fridays and Saturdays from 11 to 4. And so I really hope that you will come in and see this show. With all shows, you, you have to see them in person because it's never the same to see the printed image or, you know, it's just... To see the texture and really understand what you're looking at, it's important to come in person. So I hope that I will see a lot of you. And, and there's a reception on the 14th as well. So right, and we'll have an in-person reception. Eric will be there if any of you have questions for Eric, and he will be speaking more about his work and his process. So it's from two to four. That's a really good chance to meet the artist. So, thank you so much, Eric. Thank you. I really appreciate you spending time doing this, and thank you for all the beautiful paintings I'm proud to show. Thank you. See you all soon. Bye.